Well, good evening and welcome welcome to the Lapidary channel. Tonight I'm going to show you some basic stuff. Um, basically, just how to choose the right piece of rough for slabbing. So, right now I actually have a piece that's already on the slab saw. Here's another piece of copper lightning stone from Adams County, Pennsylvania. Um, what I've already done was actually face cut this piece. And as you can see, that's the, the first piece, the first face cut. Now what I mean by a face cut is simply that in order to get flat slabs, you have to cut off the end of the stone because of course there's a curvature, a natural curvature to the stone. So what you do is you basically cut what they would call a face cut or it's also known as an end cut. Now before you just, you mount your, your rock up, you want to be able to choose your rough and once you choose the piece of rough that you like, you got to be able to choose it from what direction. So what I'm going to do is actually come over here and wet the stone. And what you're looking for is you're going to look for the, the best patterns, the best direction of the stone, such as how, where are you going to get the thickest slabs, the nicest slabs, the most even type of color flow. Um, often when you're slabbing material, you'll actually want to slab it in a bi-directional area meaning that you might want to cut, for instance, on this stone, you can see there's some nice copper in there. <coughs> Excuse me, and there's some nice um, basalt, there's some quartz in there, a little bit of epidote. But you want to examine the stone to try to find where is the nicest area that I want to start from. Because if you were to start, say, from this area here, you're going to get mostly greens coming in. If you were to start from here, you're going to get greens with some, some copper and a little bit of quartz. But if you were to start from this, this side here, you're still going to get your green color pattern. But as you cut back through the stone, you're going to get a little bit of quartz. There's some chloride in there. So you'll, you'll have a better, how would you put it, a better quality slab in the end, such as this right here. As you can see, that one has quartz and it has a little bit of calcite right there. There's your native copper running through. There's your chlorite and your of basalt running through. And then once you cut it, you can get back to a point where maybe that stone right back through here, the colors might kind of change and not be so, so desirable. So what you can always do is you can always take it back out of your vise. You can flip the stone around, do your end cut, and then keep slabbing from there. Or if you like how the stone is, you can just slab it all the way back here and get several slabs out of it. Typically, you want to cut a quarter inch thick slab. Most people that cab, that's what they like. Most of my customers that buy rough, this is, that's about typical what they like. Sometimes a little thinner, but a quarter inch is, is typically about your, your best size that you're going to get. Now once this, is, this cuts all the way back and I can't cut any more out of it, the rock that's still being held by the vise, what I will do <coughs> is I will simply take this out, if this is the rock, and it cuts all the way back, I'll take this out, and now I'm left with that much of it. Well, I may want to flip it around this way, and then keep cutting this way. So you basically are utilizing all of your rough in, how would you put it, the most efficient way possible so you don't have a lot of loss. That's the key to good cutting, is to utilize as much material as we possibly can without losing it. So without further ado, I'm just going to cut a simple slab to it and uh, we'll go from there first. This is a Lorton uh, 14 inch. <coughs> I'm sorry, I have a cold. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this little simple nut that's actually down here. There's a little wing nut that they have on here on the Lortons. You're going to loosen that and what that does is that stops your carriage from when the, the saw is moving. That stops it from having any side-to-side -side movement in there. So what you want to do is, typically on, on this saw, you can gauge it. You can put a ruler over here. Once you, you index the, the uh, side of your carriage over, you can put a ruler there and sort of measure so you know that you got a quarter inch. Or you can always take an extra slab that you already know is a quarter of an inch, which would be... For instance, something like this, like a piece of purple jade. And you can just simply hold it onto the side of the blade. You can index your, 
your piece over, you want to move that up so it's closer to the blade. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to line it up over on the side so they, they basically meet so there's not a lip between the two of them. So I'll move that one over just a little bit. So right there, what that'll do is that'll take up for all your blade width. So you're going to end up with the same size slab out of this as this piece of purple jade. So what we'll do is once we have it indexed over, we're going to tighten up our nut. You have your little on and off chain. Basically what this does is the carriage, when the carriage goes through and as it makes its cut, this will pull on your on and off switch and it'll automatically shut your saw off for you so it's not running. Now on the lower tone is a nice thing. They're, they're not a, a commercially built saw, but they're good for everyday use. Now I use this one really heavy. I use this saw probably four to five hours a day. Um, the nice thing is if I forget to hook up the chain, <coughs> where the thread rod that, that basically guides your carriage all the way down, if, if it goes past, then I don't have this chain connected. The thread stops. So as that, that screw is turning there, it's not stripping out all the threads on the main feed there. That's a nice little feature that Delorten has. Now with this, typically what I do is I just take it and I'll measure it right to the end of the blade just so I know I'm safe. And then just hook it on. Make sure everything's tightened down. You always want to make sure that your rock is tightened down because sometimes, you know, mid-cut or at the end of a cut, maybe it comes loose a little bit. So it's always good to just, you know, make sure that, it, that it's still in there nice and snug because if this rock flies out of this vise when this blade's running, you're going to end up with a mess. You're going to end up with bearings that are probably broken. You're definitely going to lose a blade. And some of these blades, this blade here, I paid $200 for. So, so what we'll do is we'll just index it just above, pull it back. Make sure you got good rotation that it's not dragging on your rock. So we'll close your hood. Now one thing I want to show you that I did actually here. If you notice, there's a little magnet up top here. Actually, I have a little magnetic flashlight up top there. The reason I did that was not necessarily just to have a magnet up top, but any iron filings that are floating around the inside that come off the side of the blade or other components actually get caught up in here. And this black goop that you see is actually iron filings. Now you don't ask why would I want to catch all them? Well, because they're abrasive. It's just like having the, you know, iron inside your engine, you know, inside your oil. What it's going to do, it's going to wear everything down exponentially more than it would if you wouldn't have it. So I just simply put two magnets up there, put them right above the blade. So that way as the oil is drawn up, it's catching those filings and it does a great job and actually will improve the, the life of your blade over time. And that's about it. Now just to show you guys, um, here's actually another, this is a 26 inch saw and what I did with this one as well was actually just cut, let me set my tripod up here a little bit. Sorry I'm new at this. I did a face cut on this one. I'll take off. This one's built a little bit different. Somebody is custom building these out in the Midwest. I actually got this in a trade deal. So I'm honestly, I'm not sure who made this saw. Um, we are going to be manufacturing saws soon. So, but right now we're not. But this is actually Kaleidoscope Jasper from Oregon. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus here. There you go. And as you can see, that's a nice little end cut. So what we'll do with these pieces, 
in here is the same thing. We'll just simply index this guy over and uh, just simply go from there and just keep cutting slabs out of it. For some reason, my camera is not autofocusing. There we go. So I have the video running. We might as well just index one more over. Now on this one, this actually has a nut down on the bottom that needs to be turned to lock the carriage in place. It's already set, we have it line set. So when it indexes through, it's gonna automatically cut off. And this is some super, absolutely killer material. Um, it's from the uh, Blazing Flame Pocket. And um, that's about it. Gonna tighten up our carriage. Slabbing is very, very simple. It's, you wanna use less thinking and more just creative.